What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering. And uh, one of the things I used to talk more about on this channel is the uh, destructive tendencies, the destructive path that third wave feminism leads a lot of young females down, at least in my opinion. Um, you know, the idea that um, all of what is now considered female empowerment, things like thruples and... Um, you know, body positivity. These are actually things that uh, when these kids grow up, they will, in my opinion, deeply regret. Uh, I'm working hard, for example, to lose weight right now. Uh, the idea that somebody is actively telling young kids that it's cool to be 100 pounds overweight um, is frustrating to me. It's actively damaging. Um, the idea that in my opinion, third wave feminism uh, has had a, a portion of it that has gone after the traditional couple or even a traditional relationship. The idea that uh, being a stay-at-home mom is now something that is frowned upon. Um, I think all of these things are very damaging for females. And a lot of women are going to wake up in their 40s, single, uh, filled with regret. And they're going to look back at some of the decisions they made. Um, and they're going to be extraordinarily angry, uh, with good reason because they were fed a lot of this just garbage. The idea that in order for a woman to be happy, she must have a career that you, you must have a career and you must also, you can have it all. They say, well, you can't really, um, while careers are for some women, so is homemaking and both are uh, equally good if that's what the person wants to do. I don't have any problems at all with a career woman. Um, you know, I married somebody with two degrees and he's a chemist and has worked hard for, I don't know, the last 20 years. Um, finally getting uh, laid off due to coup-related slowdowns. And I decided that, uh, you know, I would ask her to give it a try, you know, you know, don't rush back to work, take some time off. And you know what? She's extraordinarily happy. Um, but I know that there are some people out there that really want that career fulfillment and that's okay. Like everybody's different, but the, you know, I'm not, by the way, I should say opposed to feminism at all. It's, just, it's especially what many would have known as second wave feminism. But I don't find much of a need for feminism in 2021 because most of their narratives, their big important narratives that they talk about are based uh, in, in, in fantasy. Uh, the idea that you'll see every once in a while some moron talking about the wage gap. Uh, the wage gap is a, 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 a lie. It's uh, not backed up by any economic data. It is a pure narrative. In fact, paying a female less for doing the same job than a male is actually illegal. Um, but there is this narrative, right? Um, you know, that women earn less because uh, because they're female, which, in, which is just simply not true. These numbers are calculated based on uh, decisions people make. You know, men are more, you know, testosterone is a thing. Men are more likely to push for bigger raises. Men are more likely to take riskier jobs, which tend to have higher salaries. Men don't carry babies for nine months out of the year. Um, you know, and there's a, just a, a, million, a myriad of things that build up this 30 cents or 20 cents, whatever these morons try to tell you, uh, is a thing just because woman. Simply not true. Um, another thing we saw, I think, pushed in... Um, this third wave feminism is infidelity or the idea that, you know, you'll be much happier if you, if you, uh, just sleep around, uh, you don't need to be tied down to any one person. And maybe that's true. Um, but you know, I've been around long enough, you know, I'm almost 40 now. I see a lot of females and males, by the way, who, you know, spent their twenties, uh, and early thirties, you know, um, hooking up and now they're alone. And um, there's a stigma around that. You know, men can't find a woman because they hear he's a dog. Uh, women can't find a, a good man because they don't like that they were so promiscuous. This is just the reality of it. Um, and this article that was written, Turn Up the Cheat, 
all women should have an affair once in their life. It made me feel spicier and look younger. Well, first of all, it didn't make you look younger. And and uh, second of all, this is just my opinion. If I looked like this, you know, every day my partner came home, whether it was man or woman, I would be rubbing their feet. And this has a predictable ending. Nothing beats the buzz of sneaking around behind a partner's back or the rush of adrenaline from fear of being caught in the act. This is a child mentality. I'm not saying everyone has to... Look, I've been with the same girl since high school. Since high school. We started dating when we were 17 years old. I'm now 37. We've been together 30 years. Think about that. I'm not even 40. Wait, can I do math right? Sorry, 20 years. Holy crap. Ah, oh, man. Just time just flies when everything's so great. But I'm not saying that that's for everyone. Um, but the idea that like infidelity is this thing that is cool or hip, uh, we'll see how this works out. More than a quarter of women who cheat feel more attractive and 22% feel younger, according to a study by Affairs website, IllicitEncounters.com. So a website that promotes this type of behavior uh, is supporting it. Shocking. Now, again, my thing with infidelity has always been a frustrating... Look, we're all human. Everyone makes mistakes. Uh, especially if you go out to the pub and you know, or you're you know out of town or whatever the case may be. I'm not judging anybody. But what I am saying is, you know, a prolonged kind of affair is just selfish, self-serving, and uh, just mean. Just break up with the person. Like, I don't understand this. It's such a selfish, childlike mentality to have to be carrying on an ongoing affair. My affair made my skin glow. Uh, that's just a made-up thing. I felt both youthful and energized. I didn't need Botox or a gym membership when I had a bit on the side. Is this what she looked like then and what she looks like now? Hmm. Okay. I was in a steady but mundane relationship with James when my head was turned four years ago by a married man at work. By the way, this dude who's also married is a piece of garbage too, okay? This isn't just her it was not as though I was looking to cheat, but with the years with James, the initial spark had fizzled out. Well, see, that's when most people just break up. You know, that's what the adult thing to do is. In the early days, he lavished me with meals in fancy restaurants, bought me flowers, and made me feel like the center of the universe. I had never met a man like him who was completely obsessed with my happiness. Yeah, that's called every relationship at the beginning. Without warning, though, cracks began to show. I cannot put my finger on exactly when or why it happened, but the fun nights out became boring nights in, and I felt invisible. I'm sure she did nothing to try and reverse that. Um, when James didn't have his head buried in his phone, he was on his games console. <laughs> yeah, games console. I was 38, and I could feel my youth and confidence slipping away. I gained about two stone in weight, finding comfort in chocolate and cake. Again, self-serving. Yet, the more I tried to talk to James about how I was feeling, the more he clammed up. Again, at no point did you just break it off. You thought, boy, it would be funny. It'd be much better if I cheated on him. I tried to spruce up things with spicy clothes and killer heels. He spurred my advances. Sometimes I caught him looking at other women in the street. So when Andrew, these are fake names, began flirting with me at work on a night out, I felt flattered. He was 10 years younger than me and estranged from his wife. They all say that. Going to leave my wife. Right, ladies? Ladies out there, my 5% of female viewers, the guys always say they're going to leave their wife and they never do. After a few drinks, we ended up back at his place having an incredible passion hookup, which lasted longer than James 10 minutes. I had, experience, I had an experience of rush like that. Going back to face James afterwards was not easy, but having spontaneous, mind-blowing hookup with Andrew, Andrew was all I could think about, and it erased all guilt. Look, sometimes it's okay to be selfish, but the idea that you're going to come out here, you know, and um, uh, advertise it like oh, everyone should do this. 
Andrew and I met up whenever we could without raising suspicion. I put a lock code on my phone so James couldn't check my messages. Thing is, James didn't care. He probably knew, and he didn't care. I even concocted a story about how I had enrolled in an evening dressmaking course so I could get out of the house. Another time, I conspired with a friend who called me to arrange a night out while James was in earshot. And instead of meeting her, I went to see Andrew. Oh, you are just so stunning and brave. Women never say never to infidelity because if you're being taken for granted and your fellow won't listen, then it is fair game. Women never say never to infidelity. Sorry. Because if you're not being taken for granted, your fellow won't listen, then it's fair game. No, it isn't. This is a a sad, selfish uh, way to go. And this is published, you know, this is a big thing. Now, let's see how this ended up for her. Of course, I would much sooner. Wait a second. Check that. He had no idea about uh, three months on and after two years together. James ended things. Oh, so I got bored with you. Um, I missed the rush of endorphins by this time when my relationship with James was uh, gone. Well, maybe he smelled another dude on you. Three months on, and after two years together, James ended things too. Check that. Let me read that again. In time, Andrew patched things up with his wife. Shocking. By the way, ladies out there, they never leave their wives. And called on uh, called time on our affair. It had lasted three incredible months. I missed the rush of endorphins by this time, and my relationship with James was done too. Three months after that, and two years after two years together, James ended things too. So both your affair guy and your your side piece and your boyfriend both dumped you in a time in which you could have been going to the gym, uh, being single, and making yourself feel better. I had no idea. Oh, he had no idea about my affair, or if he did, he didn't show any suspicions. Maybe he was getting his kicks elsewhere, too. Way to justify it. I did not fall apart when our relationship ended because my affair with Andrew had shown me that I deserved better. Although I have been on dates since, I'm 46 and still searching for the one. Well, maybe you should have put time into your actual relationship. Or maybe you should have broken up with the original guy instead of leading him on for two years while you were stepping out on him. I mean, this is not empowering. This woman is going to be alone for a very long time. I can just tell because she has a selfish attitude. But yeah, go at it, women. Get, at, get out there. It's all fair game. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.